You're always a winner with the Toy Tune Podcast. Available on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and where other quality podcasts can be heard. Ideal Toys Motorific Computer Car. This is a toy from the late 60s, early 70s, somewhere around in there. And it's a small battery-powered car that follows little program discs to do steering action. So it's not an actual computer car, it's a cam-following car. But they called a lot of stuff like this back then computer cars. There's no onboard computer. It's all mechanical. That's just splitting hairs. <laughs> I didn't have one of these back then. Uh, they are a really neat uh, toy, a toy line, an ideal motorific line. Has a lot of different sets. Uh, they have a boatific line as well, racerific. Now the set I had was the Alcon Highway Torture Track, which was a hand-me-down for my older brother. Uh, I loved that toy. Uh, when my brother gave it to me, I, I loved it. I played with it for hours on end. And I used to go out to flea markets, well, yard sales actually, with my mom back in the early 70s. And I would find more pieces of track and cars and stuff. And I would pick them up. And I had this huge track in my room that I, put, I would put together every once in a while with like 10 or 12 cars. <laughs> I wish I had all that stuff. From back then. Maybe sometime in the future I'll get a hold of another motorific set. Maybe the Alcan Highway, since it's the one I had to begin with, and give some memories of my time with motorific and some of the company history, I mean, stuff like that, but how, how it originated. Maybe I'll do a Toy Tune podcast episode. I've not done a podcast in a long time, so maybe I'll do one on Ideal Toys Motorific. Anyway, I'm getting off the tangent here. They made several different types of these computer cars. This one's the Barracuda. It had a Mustang. I think they had a Ferrari as well, if I remember correctly. And what's neat about these cars is they run on these little cam-following discs right here. You put on the bottom of the car, they have a little lever, which I'll show here in a minute, that makes the steering move back and forth to make it do different steering actions. The box art's pretty cool. I like how they got the simulated computer circuitry back behind these program discs. That's pretty awesome. Four program discs, a driving pattern on each disc. You pick the program, then watch it go. Pretty awesome. I love the artwork of toy boxes back in the 50s, 60s, 70s. They're really neat to see. Now on the bottom of the box, it shows upside down. Never mind. It shows some of the stuff that you can do. You've got the figure eights, you got the square with the barrels that you can use. Set up your own Gymkhana by placing the barrels around the course your computer car will run. Then see if you can have the car negotiate the course without knocking over the barrels. Yeah. Unfortunately, this car is so out of whack, it will not do that. <laughs> well, the Mustang. I got two of these. Of course, on the back, it shows how to put the batteries into the car. Runs on two AA batteries. You have your switch, how to assemble it, how to install the program, program discs. And here's all the other cars they have. Here's the Barracuda, which that's what this one is. It had a Jaguar XEE TR3, awesome. There's the Ferrari. I've got a Mustang. Oh, they had a Camaro too. I forgot about that. That's pretty cool. So let's open up the box. I ain't gonna open up this box. This one has never been used, so I'm gonna leave it like it is. But the Mustang has already been opened previously. So we're going to open up this box. It was purchased at Eckert's. So slide it out of the box. Just like so. Also in the box, we have, there's the program disc. They come flying out. Oop. I have this little piece of paper here. That's for the Motorific Battery Recharger. So you have some rechargeable AA batteries. You can use the official Motorific Battery Recharger to charge up your batteries for your cars. That's pretty cool. I've never seen one of those. Get this off. A little bit better picture of the artwork here now. 
So here's the three barrels that you get. They're little plastic barrels. They're hollow inside that you can set up. That's kind of cool. We'll just leave those in there. We're not going to use those. And of course, here's the Mustang. Important to free car, remove screw from underside of a platform. Yeah, there's a little screw that goes in right there. You see, whoop, whoop, there we go. See a little hole? I think the screw goes in like right here. That holds the car down while it's being shipped and everything like that. The Barracuda is still fastened down, which is why I'm not going to do anything with that one. I'm going to leave it sealed in the box. So here's the Mustang. It's kind of cool looking. Number seven. Brown Mustang. Which you bet it could have been red. I would like had a red one. Or a blue one. On the top it says computer car. I like this. A simulated computer. <laughs> Some nice details in the back. Oh, what's the license plate say? NY14. New York. It's a New York Mustang. Awesome. Here's the front. Got some good details. I like the black blacked out windows and the two-tone color here, the black hood. It says Mustang on the side. <laughs> What's cool about these older toys? It has a die cast chassis. You don't see that very often. That's pretty cool. Now here you can see the little cam follower. And what that does is when that moves in and out, it'll make the steering move. The unfortunate thing about these toys is there's real no straight ahead fine adjustment to these. So even though you got a cam in here, it's supposed to be going straight, it may be slightly off to one side, so it'll make an arc. Uh, later on in this video, you're going to see that. I put the figure eight disc in this thing, and it doesn't do a figure eight. It does like a lopsided roundabout floop de floop de floop de floop de do kind of thing going on. But it's still kind of cool to mess around with. I uh, got your on off switch here. Now, to put a program disc on, you hold the wheels over to one side to get the, the disc out of the way, the uh, bar out of the way. You pick a program disc, you set it on, little tabs. Turn it a little bit to lock it in place and let off the steering. So as this runs, this will turn and move this tab back and forth, this bar, and allow the car to steer around. That's pretty awesome. So let's take it apart here. Pop it off. Ooh. There we go. So here's a close-up of the car itself, of the chassis. You can see right here's the motor, which is replaceable. You can pop these out, put different motors in. That's one of the cool things about the Motorific toys. Uh, you can exchange motors and all kinds of cool stuff. Two AA batteries on off switch up here. You can see down inside here, there's like a little gear way down there that drives another gear underneath that drives the cam on the back side. So let's put a couple batteries in it. Plus goes backwards up here. So, boop, and then this one goes that way, so we'll turn it on, see the motor spinning, you can see the steering activating, so let's flip it over so you can see what the cam's doing, so every once in a while you'll see the cam turn to make the car steer. That's pretty cool. So the cam that's on it right now is, let's see, what one is that? That one's called the Dog Bone. That's the Dog Bone cam. And you also have, what's this one say? Square. This one is... Slalom. And this one should be the figure eight. Yeah, figure eight. That's pretty cool. It's a peppy little car. It moves pretty good. Whee! <laughs> but you need a lot of room to run this. Uh, it, it 
it takes quite a bit of room to run these cars. Unfortunately, my living room is not so big. Plus, i got to deal with a pug and a cat that likes to chase this thing around on the floor. So, <laughs> it was a lot of fun trying to shoot some video of this thing actually uh, running. So, anyway, what else can I talk about on this car? Like I said, I'm going to do a motorific episode sometime. Yeah, this one's dated 1970, Japan. Assembly number 5A-093. I think it's so cool that they're die cast. That's pretty awesome. I love, I loved my motorific set when I had one back in the day. Uh, like I said, I wish I still had all that stuff and all of my cars and everything. Now reassembly is fairly straightforward. You want to put the whoop, the back end first, like so. Get it in there. It's got a little ledge. Then you just push it forward like so, and there we go. You don't do it that way. It's really hard to get these things to snap back together again. That's like a little trick I remember from my days of playing with the motorific vehicles. So I'm going to go ahead and put a uh, disc in one of these. I'm, and uh, go shoot a little bit of video of it running. You don't want to give up the disc. Get out of there. Give me the disc back. Why don't you want to come off? I guess you want to keep that one. Get out of there. Get off of there. There we go. Ugh. All right. So let's go uh, run the Mustang a little bit and uh, see how it does. Well, I totally gave up on using the barrels. As you can see, this car goes all over the place. It has the figure eight disc in it, but its alignment is pretty off. There's no adjustment for the alignment, so I really can't get it going to figure eight. So I said the heck with it. You need a lot of space to run this toy car. So I'm just gonna show this a little bit of video of the car running itself. Maybe sometime in the future when I go to a gymnasium or something where I can let the car run all over the place, I'll do another video just showing it running around. But you get the idea. You change the program program disc, you get different behaviors. It's a pretty cool little toy. Well, that was Ideal's Motorific Car. Another really great toy from the late 60s, early 70s. That is totally awesome. As always, everyone, thanks for watching. <laughs>